When I was underneath the stars years ago, I was Grand Canyon. I was experiencing that I've never experienced in my life. There's thousands and thousands of stars. You can put your hands up and reach them almost. I don't think I've ever felt as close to God as the stars. Boy, does it make you realize you are one teeny, teeny part of this massive universe. Roger is not sitting still. He is on pilgrimage. He's on a pilgrimage to see every beautiful thing God ever made. And what better way to do that than to go to the bottom of the Grand Canyon with people that you don't even know? You know, nature, outdoors, yes, you could say, oh, the springtime, the beauty of the flowers and the trees blooming and, and that, yeah, it opens your eyes to the rhythm of life, the seasons of your life, you know, there's a time for this, there's a time for that. So yes, I see God in creation. You know, I see God in people. I see God everywhere. If I have the time to open my eyes and be present to that moment, he is so joyful about giving anything to anybody, whether they're in need of it or not. He loves the act of giving, which is why his organization is rooted in that because he believes it, he understands it, and he wants everybody to feel that. And it's contagious. So one of the areas that, um, as a neuro rehab specialist, I uh, evaluate is spasticity. So spasticity is muscle spasms that the muscle is firing 150% because you don't have the regulation from the brain or the spinal cord to kind of calm that down. Um, in Roger's case, it was cerebral palsy. So he was uh, born with an injury to the brain that caused spasticity to his legs and also with his speech too to be in your 80s and to be in your 80s with spinal stenosis and cerebral palsy and spasticity to say, you know what? I don't want to look down to the bottom of there. I want to go down to the bottom of there. That's incredible. The poem reads in my mind, you don't know what God's going to put in your heart, mind, and soul. So you just open to whatever that experience exists because you know God will be there, but you don't know how God's blessed me to be a giver. You know, I have to be a receiver and let God put his praises into me and be open to the surprises that's gonna happen on this trip. I think it's easier to give than it is to receive. It takes absolute simplicity and humility and trust to receive. And I think that's a challenge for any, any of us. He's invited God into that challenge. That's why he's going. First thing I like to read is the prayer that I think maybe summarize is what I'm looking for on this trip. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to experience nature in a way that I never thought possible. I'm humbled by this invitation and all the sacrifice so many people are making for me to have this once in a lifetime experience. It's overwhelming, it is. Help us to recognize you and each other. Give me the grace to be free from fear and to be fully present on this trip. Open my eyes and my mind and heart to learn what you have planned for me. Thank you, Father, for guiding us. Thank you for carrying us through. Lord, and we just thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're here moving amongst us. We are going to come out of this canyon refreshed, renewed, a new creation in Christ Jesus. I started out on that morning at about 7 o'clock to go down. I said to myself when I looked at the canyon and it's immensely in the trail, old crap, <laughs> you know, what am I doing? But from that second on, the miracle happened. I was at peace the whole time. Never any 
anxiety, any stress. I can't say enough about how God in prayer took over. He's absolutely in a relationship of deep trust. That's how Roger is every minute. He's in constant conversation with this best friend. He decided now he is, see now you've officially hiked the Grand yep. Canyon. There you go. There's a whole nother level of being deep within us that Roger has tasted, he knows it. I mean, can you imagine, inflict upon yourself the maladies that this man carries. I don't know many who could come out such a joyful soul. Oh, we made it. We made it, we made it. <laughs> I think when you have a handicap, as he does, you like to be sure-footed. You like to know the chapter and the verse and what's coming next. You want the agenda. When you receive, all bets are off. You have to let go. You've got to surrender. When your fist is closed, you get nothing. It's when you open your hand and allow the people you're with, in this case, to put something there and be surprised and delighted by. Jesus says, I lead you beside still water, and there it refreshes your soul. That is heavy duty. Go to the place of the still water, and your soul will be refreshed, but you gotta go there. You have to choose to go to the still water, to see the wonder before you, to see the stars. This trip was not lost on Roger in that he could be of service to the Sherpas. When Roger realized that he had people that wanted to do this trip, that he could be of service to them, that flipped his mindset and a peace came over him. It's an interchange of love. It's communion is what it is. It's the meeting of souls. We're getting very excited and we were anticipating like, what's gonna happen? and. All of a sudden, in focus, started coming this group of people. One log and then it'll be smooth for a little bit. And we're almost yeah. there. I see it, I see it. And they kept getting closer. And you could hear the footsteps on the rocks and you could hear the laughter. How could you not be changed? It was a moment in time that that group of people shared. No one else can relate to the hardships, the joy to celebrate and bring a man who could not do this at all without the help of these people to selflessly say, I can hike like this, but you can't and you want to. So let's go together. All of the Sherpas, one by one, thanked him. The gratitude that they had for taking him and, and asking him, can we take you on this trip? It just blew my mind. Whatever age you are, never give up. Do the best of your ability, and that will be done. O oh God of this awesome night, the many splendored God of the stars we see, the God of the wind that moves through these sparse trees, God of the depths of this canyon and God of the heights of this sky, fill us with your presence in a way we have never known. Let us understand that all of this is for our good pleasure. 
keep us in step with the rhythm of this symphony so that when we return and can no longer see what we have seen, we will still hear that sweet melody in our hearts and recall this very sacred place.